This video is for you aspiring tech bros, tech gals, tech nerds, or all of the above. I'll be discussing whether coding boot camps are worth it, and I'll give you some of my favorite resources for breaking into the tech industry as an aspiring programmer. This video was inspired by Alice, so if you like this video, maybe thank Alice in the comments section. So without further ado, let's get to it, guys. So what is a coding bootcamp? These are really common in the US and they're basically what they say they are on the tin. They're schools mainly targeted at people with little to no programming experience, with the aim of teaching you everything you need to know to make it as a software engineer in the tech industry. And these bootcamps are usually full time, so eight hours a day or they're part time and they usually take about three months to complete. So are they worth it? Just a disclaimer here guys is that I myself have never attended a coding bootcamp because I had some coding experience when I decided to get into the tech industry. But I'll do my best to be as informative as possible. If you stick around until the end, I'll tell you what other fantastic YouTubers you could subscribe to who attended coding boot camps with zero prior coding experience and landed great jobs in the tech industry. So I guess the first question is, are these boot camps worth it? Well, that depends. Um, these boot camps are just businesses. Some businesses are shit, some are scams, and some are fantastic. So as ever, it's super important to do your research first. But don't worry, I'll give you some pointers to get you on the right track. So narrowing down the question further, are some coding boot camps worth it? In my opinion, yes, they can be. So as I said, these boot camps often take three months, if not more. And if you're in the US, they often cost about $13,000, though the price could vary dramatically from one school to another. For most people, this is a huge time and financial investment. But if you think of yourself as a serious beginner and you're willing to aim very high, then these boot camps could be a very worthwhile investment for you. If you're in the States, it's no secret that the tech industry pays very well. Starting salaries for software engineers are often six figures. Obviously, this can vary dramatically from one company to another and one location to the next. So if you're looking for a job at one of the fan companies, for example, the pay there is higher, so the return on your investment is higher. Likewise, as I said in this video here, location matters. So if you're applying for a job in New York, say, or Silicon Valley, then the income is generally higher, which again means you have a greater return on your investment. So to summarize what I've said, basically, whether or not a bootcamp is worth it depends on three main factors, which I'll get to. The key idea here is, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to commit to a consistent effort for possibly up to a year or even longer? Because um, the tech industry is rapidly evolving and even experienced software engineers may not know everything. So there are constantly new programming languages, new tools, new frameworks being developed. So if you want to be a software engineer, I'd say it's healthy to approach this career path with the mindset that you'll be a lifelong beginner. Yeah, once you know the basics, it's way easier to learn how to use new tools, but you have to be comfortable always learning new things. So anyway, what's my point here? Am I just spouting nonsense? Well, the point is, because the tech industry evolves so rapidly, boot camps can only teach you the basics. There's only so much detail that they can dive into but that doesn't mean they're worthless. A good bootcamp will set you on the right path. It'll teach you the basics of everything you need to know to get a job in the tech industry, and it'll lay a solid foundation so that you can then put in some more practice in your own time, which you'll definitely have to do so that you can fill in any gaps in your knowledge. Software engineering is a very practical skill, so while it may seem really difficult at first, just remember to keep practicing. So this leads me to my three top tips to break into the tech industry. The first is super important. You have to form a project portfolio. So this kills two birds with one stone. Firstly, by working on personal projects, you'll learn so much. This is one of the fastest ways to learn how to code and cement important concepts in your memory. So once you've built a good foundation and you understand all the programming basics, all you have to do now is apply your knowledge and just make something. So I have your code editor open in one window and Google and Stack Overflow open in the other window because you're gonna have to look up everything. Now, if you don't know what Stack Overflow is, it's just an online community of programmers where people ask questions like, how about write code that does A? Or guys, can you explain why this bit of code I've written isn't working? So if you spend ages trying to figure out how to do something, don't waste too much time. Guys, don't try to be a hero. Just seriously, just do yourself a favor and get your ass to Stack Overflow. Now, the second reason a project portfolio is important is that it gives employers proof that you know your shit. So this leads me to my second tip to break into this tech industry, which is about the tech CV and your LinkedIn presence. Often large tech companies are super competitive, and one thing a lot of people don't know is that the CV is often first screened by a computer. So very often you apply for a job and have your application rejected without a living, breathing human being ever seeing your application in the first place. So your CV has to be on point. It has to be optimized for both computers and humans. The computer will scan your CV for keywords relevant to the position you're applying to. For example, Java, C++, Python, Git, version control, front end, back end. Now let's say you get past the computer screening stage and you're lucky enough to have a human leave and look at your CV. Then you're gonna need to prove you can actually use these tools. So while it's great that maybe you took a coding course and you learn how to code in Python or Java, employees wanna see that you really know how to use these tools. 
So this is where your project portfolio comes in. So the job description says you need to know how to code in JavaScript. And as far as potential employees are concerned, you don't know how to code in JavaScript until you've built something with JavaScript. Now, I don't mean to overwhelm you guys. So let's say you've doubled in 10 programming languages. I'm not saying that you should build a project for every single programming language and tool that you specify on your CV and that you claim to know on your CV, but you should at least try to build something that uses the languages relevant to the position you're applying for. Now, some of you may be really pushed for time, so just make something you have the time to make. Some projects may take a few hours of work, some may take a few months of work. As for your LinkedIn profile, it's super important you also talk about some of the projects you've worked on there. If you want to do even better, then in addition to describing the project, you could attach a link to an online portfolio or to your GitHub profile. If you don't know what GitHub is, it's basically an online store of all your code for your projects. If you want to use GitHub, you'll need to learn how to use Git, which is a tool for version control. And if you don't learn this now, you'll definitely learn version control on the job as it's super, super essential to software engineering particularly when you're part of a team writing code for the same project. But I'd like to stress that if you're feeling particularly overwhelmed and you're pushed for time, just focus on getting proficient with writing code and you know leave the learning about version control until later. So at this point, you've made it past the CV screen. Good for you. The computer has approved your application and through your descriptions of your projects, experience and education, you have convinced a human that you may actually know what you're doing. So the final major hurdle is often these coding interviews. Now these interviews are often algorithmic in nature. They cover computer science fundamentals. I'll be honest with you guys, these interviews, they're like, they're fucking tough. Lucky for you, I don't have a computer science degree. So I had to learn a lot of these concepts independently using resources I found online. I won't talk too much about this point, but instead I'll direct you guys to some of my favorite resources for preparing for the algorithmic coding interviews. So the first is leetcode.com. If you don't know what LeetCode is, it's an online bank of coding interview questions. Um, currently, there are just under 2,000 questions on the platform, each grouped into one of three difficulty categories. So three categories are easy, medium, and hard. Each question usually has multiple solutions ranging from your noob to pro. Many of these questions have been asked in real coding interviews. I myself have been asked some of the questions that are on LeetCode in some of my interviews. If you're willing to splash out some cash for Leetco Premium, then you can get a filtered list of questions that have been asked by different companies. For example, if you want a job at Google, you can get a list of questions that have been asked in Google interviews. There are probably at least a few hundred, so you won't run out of questions anytime soon. You'll have more than enough practice. So anyway, when I first started with Leetcode, I found the questions really difficult, and I felt that I needed a little bit more in-depth explanation in some of the computer science fundamentals. So this is when I came across AlgoExpert.io. AlgoExpert was actually co-founded by a YouTuber I subscribe to called Clement. Clement does not have a computer science background. He studied math at UniPenn, but landed a job at Google right after attending a coding bootcamp. Yeah, so basically outside this bootcamp, this dude just practices coding skills like a motherfucker, like all day. Just a disclaimer here, guys, I haven't been paid to advertise Lead Code or Algo Expert. These are honestly just fantastic resources for preparing for the coding interview. Algo Expert is a paid subscription. Right now it's about $99 for a one year subscription, which may or may not be more than you're willing to pay for, but obviously for me it was a very worthwhile um, investment. If you pay $99 for Algo Expert and you get a six figure job out of it, Look, I don't need to do the math for you guys. Like seriously, do the math yourself, bro. Like, do I look like a calculator to you? Basically, it's clearly a big win. But to summarize the th my three main points, the three things you really need to think about are your project portfolio, your CV, and your LinkedIn profile. And prep for these coding interviews. Just get these three things right, and you should manage to break into the tech industry regardless of your background. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you agree or disagree with anything I said, maybe leave a comment below and we can talk about it. As usual guys, if you want to see more content like this, then like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, bye.